Um, hello, <laughs> I am Katie Skelly and I am joined by Jaime Hernandez over here and we're going to talk to you about uh, Jaime's new art book, which is called Queen of the Ring. Um, I was lucky enough to be the editor on this book. This is my first book that I've ever edited and Jaime was so kind as to trust me to do it. And so here we are. How are you doing, Jaime? Here we are. I'm just fine. Thank you. <laughs> we just finished working on this book the other week. How was that experience for you? Easy. Um, actually, actually, um, I <clears throat> I was a little scared to do this because because uh, the images in in the book were not ever to be seen by anybody but me, and so I was a little nervous. But as the process went, it just got easier and easier, and and now I'm I'm really excited about it coming out. Very cool, and it was a big collection of drawings and all of the drawings are focused on women wrestlers mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you could tell us about um, why women's wrestling is important to you and why you like to draw it so much. Oh, it's, it's um, I don't know it started when I was very young um, it was something that caught my eye um, for a six-year-old boy, you know, thought it was kind of very eye-catchy. And, uh, um, ah, gee, uh, it's just something that's turned me on this. <laughs> since I was really young. And, uh, and uh, when I started to draw it, it just was fun as hell and, and all that. Ah, gee, I'm... I'm I'll warm up, I promise. You're doing good, you're doing good. You got this. Um, let's see, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so women's wrestling is something that comes into your life when you're a little high May. Now, mm -hmm. were you going to watch women's wrestling or did you see it on TV? How did you encounter it first? Um, it was um, when I was, you know, about six years old, um, the neighborhood kids would all watch wrestling you know, once a week on the local station. And my brother started to watch it, you know, and we we, we would watch it. And uh, uh, whenever they had the women, for some reason, that was kind of special to me, you know. Uh, and um, it was just something that, that I thought about, but it, it didn't, didn't really catch on till uh, I was like, 13 or something when I was starting to draw women and learning to draw women. I was really terrible at it, but um, I was encouraged by Gilbert to draw women. And uh, that was one of the things I started to draw. And while I was drawing other women for comics to make, make them uh, characters and stuff, the wrestling stuff, I didn't think anyone would understand. So I didn't think this was a good, good thing to pursue as far as making money, drawing comic books and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and it kind of, it was kind of my little private thing and it didn't, uh, but I never expected it to be seen by anybody, you know, because everybody had their their own little I guess you call secrets, mm -hmm. and that was, that was mine. And I thought, part of me thought that I was evil for doing it because it was such a such a you know personal thing, and it was good, went against God or whatever you know. <laughs> um, drawing women went against God, or women wrestling each other. Women wrestling. I mean, the women <laughs> was hard enough because we thought mom would get mad at us we thought mm -hmm. that she would think we were little perverts <laughs> but but and the women wrestling thing i thought i was just a weirdo for liking it you know i just thought thought people are just gonna think i'm just the weirdest little person beyond pervert you know <laughs> so that's why i kept it to myself because i i didn't 
I had no, um, I had no, nobody who did it with me. You know, the, the comic stuff, you know, I had my brothers, you know, and everything and everyone agreed that comics were cool, but this women wrestling thing was just like a, like a, like, like, oh my God, I'm so weird for doing this, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're, you're keeping your interest in it to yourself. And then you're also keeping your drawings of it to yourself. And this book collects over 150 images, I think, like of, of images that have not <laughs> been seen by the public uh, to this point at all. Um, in terms of the comics work, have things that you've drawn in these secret drawings made their way into Love and Rockets or vice versa? Yeah, yeah, there was, there were times where I couldn't keep it in and I would add a, a woman wrestler character ever, ever since the first issue, you know, and, but I thought, well, people will just see this as, as another um, uh, bit of underground uh, entertainment, you know, uh, like, like all the punk stuff and all the monsters and all that, you know, all that stuff. Um, and, uh, but even, even if, uh, I don't know, I didn't think there was any harm in, in adding a little bit of it in the comics, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, that wasn't, uh, uh, that wasn't the real stuff. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so in terms of the wrestling drawings, you have, you know, a kind of new cast of characters that you're working with and they're, you know, they don't exactly run parallel to the Love and Rockets characters, but they do have their own identities. They have their own looks, they have their own motivations. And so in a way you're kind of creating this narrative world that's outside Love and Rockets. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the characters that you've developed in your wrestling world? Right. Uh, well, let's see. The one that the one that I probably stuck stuck with most was the the character Betty Ray, which was actually a name because she had four different looks throughout the years. Mm -hmm. You know, she was a different character, and I kept giving her name to somebody else, and then. And then I would change her name and then, and then it would come back and, you know, keep coming back. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so the, yeah. So I, I, I always, I always felt better with my drawings if they had a story, if the, if the drawings had a story to them, like uh, it wasn't just images of, two wrestlers it was like well you know who this wrestler is you know who this one, you know and you don't know who this other one is but you're being introduced to this one maybe she'll stick around maybe she won't you know um you know I gave them kind of ages I, I gave them you know I, I, it was just like creating uh, regular regular comics I, I work better with drawings if if they have a story behind them mm -hmm. I don't I don't work with good with drawings if it's just an image mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nothing because I don't know I don't know who that is you know and it doesn't it's not personal enough for me mm -hmm. you know so. and another thing that I noticed in looking through the drawings and getting to know these characters is that they also seem to age as time goes on so you're working you know you're you're interested in looking at wrestlers starting from the 60s going up through the 80s and Betty Ray you know as time goes on as you continue drawing her in this like non-narrative non-comics world she's still changing her look right she's still aging she has new storylines at one point she has a daughter and so kind of having them run through like a whole life cycle seems like it was important to you do you think that's fair to say sure Sure, because because it's like I was saying, it's the like aging the characters in the comic. I just know them better, mm -hmm. and I I like um, 
that they were wrestlers from the 60s who went into the 70s and changed their style because styles changed. Even like the bathing suits they wore were like updated to like, by the 70s, it was like bathing suits you would see on the love boat or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, and so that was just kind of fun to deal with. And, and them aging just helps a lot for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. In terms of the format of the drawings that are included in this book, they range from sketches, you know, when you're first kind of like starting to figure out a pose. And then we have a few in the book that are unfinished, which I think is really nice to kind of get a better look at your process. And then you also have ones that are completed ink drawings that are inked and like meticulously colored in with Sharpie. And then we also have color drawings that are the Sharpie and colored pencil. In terms of the composition of these drawings, um, could you talk a little bit about what images inspired you? Um, I know you were looking at magazines. Um, I know you're looking at photographs of old women wrestlers that you were kind of you know, collecting and like pouring over and, and just like loving these sources. Um, why was it important for you to do things like recreate magazine covers and glamour shots in your style? Yeah, um, I'm not really sure, but I'm thinking it's it's all part of the uh, creating a story. Mm -hmm. If, if uh, when I started to add the, um, the, the headlines to the drawings, it just seemed to say more mm -hmm. to me, you know, it just was more personal. And like I do with all my my drawings and my creations, the closer I get to them personally, the better they work for me. And hopefully it makes me a better artist. Mm -hmm. um, just knowing them and, and letting them live kind of just, there's a jolt there, you know, it's it's like a, it's it's like there's life, you know, and also, since I was reading magazines and I didn't know who these people were, I just knew that they were in wrestling. Like these particular wrestlers did, wrestled mostly in Texas, these more in St. Louis, these more in New York, these, you know, and, um, but, but there they were still in magazines, like, like I knew them kind of, you know, but so they're, uh, you know, since, um, the wrestling I grew up with was all local, came from LA at the Olympic Auditorium. Um, so it was all whoever was in LA to wrestle. It was no outsiders. I didn't see, uh, you know, I never heard of like a Bruno San Martino to the magazines because, you know, he was mostly on the East Coast, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, I don't know. It, it it just it just just tells more of a story, and it's just gets closer to me, you know, in some way, good ways, and some bad ways. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so let's see. You talked a little bit earlier about their wardrobe in terms of like their wrestling uniform and how that changed throughout the years and. You can definitely track in this book how the styles change as time goes on, but could you maybe call out some of your favorite wrestling styles that you like to draw? Right. Um, well, um, I, I prefer um, the mid '60s. I mean, because that was that was you know a psychologist could tell you when you're six years old. That's when you when you you set your that's when you're most penetrated by the world with the good stuff and the bad stuff, you know? Sure. And so that time, the mid sixties was the time that I was, you know, mostly like, I don't know, by turned on by style, like, like women's hairstyles, um, uh, women's clothes, women's, um, bathing suits, women's, uh, um, just, just all that stuff that just, you know, when, when I was, I guess, falling in love, you know, 
Um, and uh, it uh, and it turned out that all this stuff, all this stuff that that kind of shaped me or, or turned me on or whatever you want to call it, um, that that it just it turned out that this crazy sport of women's wrestling had all those elements. Mm -hmm. You know, a woman's body, a woman's hairstyle, a woman's uh, uh, suit, a woman's you know uniform, like you said, um, you know, and and the details, you know, like like oh, I like I like the way this shapes a woman's body, or uh, you know, or just things like that. So it just all happened to to uh, come into this little like mixing the pot and it came out this subject you know and uh and and um uh, even even uh if if those were the things i still elaborated on it to see how how i could make it come to life more mm -hmm. you know and that's how i started with the characters and the the headlines and and this woman comes out of texas uh, this woman, she's like an East Coaster, but she wrestles in California. You know, just things like that, because that's how I saw the rest of the shows. You know, um, I know. It's, 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 all, it's all this stirring the pot and see what comes out of it. Sure, sure. <laughs> you, in addition to um, being attracted to, you know, the sort of like, the like style of it all, like the hairstyles and the uniforms. Was there anything about the way that the story of wrestling gets told that was interesting to you? Because I kind of can't help but see like the way that wrestling storylines are communicated so loudly and so clearly, like, you know, because people are fighting, you need to understand why they're fighting and what's going on. I can't help but see that style of storytelling as similar to the comics that were also influencing you when you were young. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, what's the actual question? <laughs> Great question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just felt like calling that out. But okay. yeah, no, I but, yeah. Yeah. something similar to like, even a like Betty and Veronica kind of comic in that you know, the plot is communicated in this way that's so loud and so clear and it's a conflict that like has to get resolved by the end of the comic, do you know what I mean? And then that storyline can maybe build later, but it, it's really only most important to like communicate it in that thing. And I kind of see a parallel between wrestling and, and comics like that there as well. Sure, because uh, it's, it's a drama. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a, what you call it, a play. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, there's like an over the top style that I think, yeah, is people can really respond to. And it seems like it really hooked you as well, which is very cool. Yeah. Let's see. So we talked about your character, talked about their style. Um, we talked about the format a little bit. Can you, um, can you tell me like what the difference between creating one of these drawings is and creating comics work? Like, so for instance, you know, you're using Sharpie and you're using colored pencil and you're doing all of that on like an eight and a half by 11, like computer piece of paper. Um, what's happening to those drawings after you're finishing them? Um, I put them, I put it in the stack and then start another one. <laughs> <laughs> um, or I, I uh, find one that I didn't, uh, that had, certain flaws that only I could make out and I would just redraw them, you mm -hmm. know, and then throw away the other one. See, this was not like comics. This was, since this was my personal little thing, uh, I threw away tons, tons of this stuff because it was never supposed to be seen by anyone. You know, it was just my own joy thing. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, so I, while I approached it, like a story and a drama because I wanted it to make sense for me more. 
At the same time, it was not meant to, I didn't care if it didn't mean anything to anyone else. Mm. You know, so, so these were a lot freer. Like I got Betty Ray in her, um, staggering outside of the ring and she has her hair's a mess, you know, and it says, you know, Betty disqualified or whatever. I don't have to explain that to anybody, you know, it's just, it's just for me. So that was the difference with the comic, but I think I've got that, that professionalism stuck in me. So if there is one thing I need to do with it is I need to finish it, complete it. It has to be complete just like I do the comic and it has to be finished for, to please me, you know? Um, so, but other than that, it didn't have a deadline. It didn't have a, a I didn't have to explain it to anybody. I guess, I guess that's the part I most like was the freedom and, and the privacy. Mm -hmm. You know, while I, uh, while I love doing comics and letting other people read them, it's kind of, it's a little different because I, I'm more free with this stuff because I don't have to explain it. Mm -hmm. Did that answer the question? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm, I'm looking over my notes over here. Um, let's see. So you began you began making these drawings when you were a child um but then when did you start working in this format the book goes back to 1980 right yeah. and we have um sketches in there and then we have some finished work from around that time and your style changes um not drastically but it definitely changes throughout the course of those of those 30 years um can you talk a little bit about um, what it's like to have been making these drawings for so long and right. no one's seen them before? Well, it was it was hard to do when I lived in a house with six kids <laughs> and I had to draw them in the bathroom. You know, I would take my little <laughs> my little drawing board, my pencil and my paper, and my box of coloring pencils, and I would sit there for two hours. You know, and I would, uh, and you know, there'd be constant knocking on the bathroom, like, <laughs> get out of there, I gotta go. And, and, but that was the only place I could do it. There was no privacy in our house, you know. Um, um, but, um, so I started, you know, like I said, when I was started to draw women, I was what, 13, 12 or 13, maybe, yeah. And, um, and I started to do it. So the first seven years that you see before these these images that are all thrown away, you know, I didn't keep any of them. Um, it, it was a lot of experimenting, a lot of um, like, like before I used Sharpie to color in blacks, I was using a ballpoint pen. And I, and I remember the day I discovered, hey, these work better if they're like a real um, wrestling match with a black background, like, like the lights only on them. And you know, like I see in the magazines. Oh, I, I remember things like that. Like, oh, that'd be, this would work better if I used a black background. Oh, this would look better if I, uh, if I changed the, the angle or, you know, I, I, it was just a lot of that uh, and going through discovering things and the styles of the styles of uniform they wore, you know, and stuff changed over the, the, uh, the, the, the years. Um, and then there was a time, uh, God, I guess in my late teens, uh, when I, when I, I just drew, uh, did a drawing, not an action pose. I just drew like a pinup of a woman standing there smiling with a, and, and, but I gave her an old style hair, hairdo and, uh, and an old style suit. And I just remember going, boing, this is it. <laughs> this is, this, I found it, you know, I found mm -hmm. my, my calling, if you want to call it. And yeah. I just remember going, oh, this is good. And because, and that's why a lot of my drawings are just a pinup. 
because they're just standing there, right? Big deal, nothing to it. Well, um, gives you more to work with in your head. Mm -hmm. Whether you, you want to fantasize or you want to create your story, you know, whatever. And uh, so, so that that first like say seven years was when I was just figuring a lot of things out and discovering what I liked better and what I, you know, um, I don't know why the ones that say around 1980 uh, why I kept them, mm -hmm. you know, and not the ones before. I don't, I don't remember why, but I mean, maybe because that was the time I was, mo I moved out of the house, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. that could have been, because that was about the time I first moved out. So, I don't know. Anyway, I forgot I'm being interviewed <laughs> for, <laughs> for people to hear this. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's good. It's perfect. Um, <laughs> Let's see. So um, in terms of your interest in women's wrestling, are you still keeping up with it? Are there any wrestlers that you like following now? Um, I like I like to check them out, you know. Um, um, you know, I check in on the, the TV ones on TV every once in a while, but but it's the same old thing. You wait a whole you wait a whole night to see one women's match and maybe not even a women's match. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And then I discovered YouTube. I could find anything I want. Um, the biggest federations to the smallest know nothing federations out in the middle of nowhere that do it in the parking lot behind a store, you know. And I really like like that. And you just go, who? Oh, I, I don't even know who these two are. And then then you find out. You go, you go. This is kind of cool. This is just their little um, backwoods, you know, not not backyard wrestling, but just just very small local stuff. And I I love I prefer those more than than the big WWE stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's it, I guess because it reminds me of my childhood when wrestling was local, you know, and it was it was pretty like you know, when wrestling would come to Oxnard, it was in a community center, a small room in a community center, you know, or something, you know. Um, I still like the, that, and I like the, uh, and I don't, this is going to come out wrong, but I like the non, the not so high money glamorous types. Mm -hmm. I like the ones that are, that are, like I said, uh, working for small promotions and they you could tell they're not uh you know that they wish they could be in wwe but they like one day they will and some of them do it's funny when when all of a sudden you see one like oh i remember watching this girl wrestling in a wrestling in a parking lot <laughs> you know and and now look at her you know and stuff like that so that's that's always cool but i don't know i it, it's it it goes back to um it's if it doesn't have a good story i'm not interested you know it doesn't fulfill you know I, it seems like one of your favorite storylines from what i can glean from the drawings is that you really like the idea of a woman who in her regular life is completely normal and unassuming and then she puts on tights and wrestles and has a completely different persona by night even. Um, can you talk about why that is so appealing to you? Right. Well, um, it's, um, it's contrast. You know, I've always, I've always relied on my comics to have contrast of, of you may think you know what's going on, but you don't know what's going on. And, and it's kind of the woman next, the, the girl next door kind of thing. Like, like you don't know your, your neighbor could have a secret life, you know, that you don't know about or, you know, just stuff like that. And it just make adds more to it. adds more to the thrill and the, and the story and the, um, you know, it's just, I don't know, 
Hey, it, it's it's uh, all part of the turn on. <laughs> um, well, I mean, do you regret that you got rid of any of those drawings now? Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I can remember some of them specific. And I, and I think like, well, I wasn't ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, um, but like I said, that didn't matter, you know, because they were just my mine. But, um, but yeah, I can remember stages that I went through, like, like, why did I make these women wear these outfits? <laughs> you know, I don't remember what made me do that, you know, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah, yeah, I don't really regret it. But um, like we've been, you being my editor, we've talked about this book a lot and I've, and it's made me think about stuff I've never thought about, about all this. And I realized that the material starts about 1980. Mm -hmm. I only had seven years before that, yet it seemed like a lifetime, you know, growing, growing to get the, to that point. And I find that really interesting. But then again, you know, when you're young, life, life goes slower. You know? mm. you know? um, but um, yeah, I have a question for you. Okay. Okay, you being the editor of this book, mm -hmm. You did a wonderful job, by the way. Um, um, so I don't remember our conversations in order, how we got to this point, but I don't remember what made us agree to do this book. <laughs> I mean, besides that, wow, you have all this work, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't back out now, honey, huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, no, I, you know, I feel, I felt very fortunate in that I was one of the few people who ever got to, to, who ever got to see them. And I thought that that was not fair <laughs> to the rest of the world because they're so beautiful. And uh, I think that they add so much dimension to you as, um, as an artist on the whole, not necessarily just a cartoonist, but how you process and recreate visual information. Um, and I think I, I just saw so much, um, so much potential there for understanding of your work. And that, that was what I really wanted to do was to showcase that. And so I asked you and you, you thought about it and then eventually said yes. And I think, I think that's how that came together. I think yeah. it didn't drive anybody as far as I know. <laughs> and uh and you remember during all of it i was scared to death uh, <laughs> uh yes i i do i do I, but you you know I, I mean i didn't um i i didn't really know what to expect it's kind of a really um amazing opportunity it's like i this is my first time editing something that wasn't mine and to come out and edit an art book that's art by you that's never been seen by the public is a little bit like coming off the bench and starting for the Yankees right away. Like it just, it felt really intimidating. Um, but I, I think we both worked through that together because I was terrified too. Maybe I didn't show it, but I was terrified <laughs> too um, because, you know, I, I just, I wanted to make sure that I was presenting this in a way that was in the spirit of the work that was being created. My impulse, you know, as a student of art history and a writer is to throw as much pretension at the wall <laughs> as possible in, in the hopes of getting a good grade, basically. Um, and while that works, you know, in one setting, it, it makes for a really unpleasant experience as a reader. And so I wanted to make sure that this was all going to be framed as, you know, you. And that's why the interview we have in the book is um, taken directly from a transcript that you and I did, an interview you and I did. I took myself out of it. It's it's just your text. It's you, you know, hopefully, I think, presenting the information in the way that you would have wanted to present it uh, as if you were just having a conversation with somebody mm -hmm. like we are now. So yeah, I, I think that, um, I mean, I think this was like a, a process of trust for both of us. And, you know, I, I think that it will benefit comics readers, fans of yours, 
the world at large <laughs> in terms of wrestling, hopefully. It, it's, it's just a very nice, um, it's a really nice piece. And I think it's a good showcase for what you do, who you are as an artist. I think so too. It, it, I have to admit it took, it took a while for me to get um, comfortable with it, but I mean, part of it was, God, I've got f almost 40 years under my belt you know um why not you know i've got i've got i'm not doing anything with it you know kind of thing so yeah <laughs> anything else um i believe those are our questions um yeah i think that that about covers it um thank you for asking me a question Jaime. that's so nice <laughs> so the book is coming out in August of 2021 and it's going to be gorgeous. I'm so excited. And yeah, so look forward to picking that up. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you so much for doing this, Jaime. You betcha. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>